See, the first time I played this, I, I had no idea what that was all about. And the second Achoo. time, I had played Siberia 1 first, and I still had no idea what that was all about. Like, I, I understand that it is the... Uh, her, her employer, the law firm, trying to get her to come back. But... Uh, it doesn't make much sense to me. And why are they portrayed as, like, villains? Like, in the dark lighting and, and all that. It doesn't really make much sense. Let's talk to the little girl again. Do you like your candies, then? Not bad. Do you have any family, Melka? I'm big enough to take care of myself. Sure. Hey, don't get mad. It was just a question. And anyway, of course I've got family. Zirkos, he takes care of me. Because my mama, she's dead. Yeah, I understand. No, you don't. <laughs> you must be really rich. And you must have thousands of friends in America. So, what are you doing here, Cape Walker? I don't know. I'm miles from home, and I don't really know where I'm going. It's crazy. Yes, Kate Walker, but there are loads of people who don't know where they're going. And they are all crazy, too. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm going to Siberia. That suits you as a destination? Hmm. If one day you return to America, you must take me with you, Kate. Sure. Sure. Tell me. Is Sirkos kind to you? Yes, very. He is my friend. Has he been living in the village for long? When my ma and me came here, Sirkos looked after us. That was a long time ago, you know. All right. Do you know who could show me how this coal machine works? No, it's an old machine, Kate Walker, and it smells. <laughs> That's how children talk. Maybe there's someone who knows how this machine works? Not Circos. He's too small to press the button. <laughs> the Berghoff brothers, they must know. They know everything. But I don't like them. They are not nice. Do you know a place called Siberia? It's a land. They talk about it in kid stories. It's so far away it probably doesn't exist anyway. From what I've heard, there's fields of blue grass as far as the eye can see. And mammoths. That's not right. Grass is green. Or yellow in the fall. Blue grass is silly. Either way is fine with me, Malka. You really are a strange lady, Kate Walker. Why do you say there are bad guys here? The Borgoff brothers are liars and thieves. And they're nasty and they smell. Especially the little one that walks like a penguin. You shouldn't make fun of people, Malka. The big one isn't nasty, though. He's really stupid. A big dumb Yuki. <laughs> the Burgoff brothers could maybe give me a hand. Why not? They're as dirty and smelly as the machine you want to mend. I'm gonna see what I can find further on. Thanks, Malka. As you like, Kate Walker. Sounds lovely. Let's have a look at the machine. Needs petrol, I guess. Out of luck. The can's empty. I'm gonna see if I can find somewhere to fill it. A petrol-driven generator. Now where could I find some fuel? Surely not here. Let's see. Ah, oh, there's no more gas. That's the problem. We already established that, but yeah. I do like how uh, she makes little puddles in the... Uh, puddles. <laughs> Splashes in the puddles as she walks. So let's find those Borgov brothers. Squirrel. Oh, honestly, oh, I mean to say, what an, what is it this time? Shut it, right? You hulking jerry roll, or else you'll be answering to me. And what is it now? Good day, sir. Don't go in chatting me. <laughs> what can I do for you, ma'am? 
I need coal for my train, but the coal dispenser has run out of gasoline. I thought you might be able to sell me a bit of fuel. So, you're ready leaving? Sorry, we ain't got no gas. Ain't got no gas at all. But what's that motor noise behind you then? Hmm. Oh, yeah. That works on electricity, she, miss. <laughs> and that smoke works on electricity too? Uh, see, uh, what you see ain't your business, miss. Take care of your own backyard and leave me and my brother here to work. Yeah. Leave Igor and uh, Ivan to work. But I need some gas, that's all. We ain't got none. N-O-G-A-S. No gas. N-O. No. Gas. No gas. No gas. Keep asking. Hey, sir, I really need some gas, and looks like you've got some here. Oh, patootie. Don't know the meaning of no. As in, no, we ain't got none. No ga uh no gas, no gas. You should just say that he doesn't want to sell it. My name's Kate Walker. I just got here. Mm. A pretty little thing so far from home. Where are you from, Lovebird? From from New York. New York, eh? Hey, <laughs> well, I never You travelling alone, ma'am? No, no, I'm travelling with two companions. I came by train. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> yeah. Tree. I came by train and... So we sewn, me and my bro. Nice machine. No, really. <laughs> no ration tin can, that baby, or no? Nice train. Nice. Nice. Doo-doo. Uh, yeah, actually, it belongs to one of my friends. You must be very rich, your friend, eh? <laughs> Doo-doo. Not really. He built the train to go looking for sight. Uh, I mean, to realize a kind of dream of his. Dreams, eh? Hey, very interesting. What kind of dream needs a pretty train like that, eh? If it's not a personal question. Do -do. A childhood dream. <laughs> tell me more, tell me more. If I don't get some gas, I can't get any coal, and my train is just going to stay here, blocked in this station. And so what do you want from us? Gas. Obviously. Sir, I'd like to... Look, we ain't got no time to waste with you, sugar mitts. Try not being quite so pushy. <laughs> You're starting to give me and my brother ideas, right? <laughs> mm. yeah. I see. Be a pity if something nasty happened to you, my little pouty lips. <laughs> Seeing as you don't seem to want to help me. <laughs> you might have a point there, my flower. Goodbye now. No. Goodbye. You disgusting, creepy guy. Also, they remind me of um, the the two guys that Cruella de Vil hires in the Disney's version of the Dalmatians, 101 Dalmatians. I think it's, it's both their look and their really weird accent. Poor little thing. You hey, no! No! Ah! You clam brain blubber bag! Wait till I catch you! Yuck! This machinery stinks to high heaven! That guy also reminds me a bit of a, an adult Momo. Let's just get the petrol and go. Yeah. 
in our pockets. Nothing happened. I offered to buy it. They should have just went for that. Then I wouldn't have annoyed them. I never get that in, in films or series or any media where there's clearly people who don't want you to hang around them and there's a simple solution to get rid of you yet they refuse to do it like they just said oh yeah we've got a can of petrol here then I would have left to wait two weeks for a maintenance guy for that? No, we don't. Hi, Malika. You want to talk to me? To you, yes. <laughs> I'm on a mission. Malka, I finally managed to get that machine working. So now you must smell bad too, Kate Walker. <laughs> what a weird kid. I tell you, that's manners. Does that mean you're going? Yeah. I've got to carry on with my journey. Have a nice trip. I'm going to see what I can find further on. Thanks, Malka. As you like, Kate Walker. And what a shame. We don't get to explore more of this little town. Seems over so quickly. Or is it? Oop, fulfill the call. has happened. Calm down, Oscar. What's happened? Mr. Forelberg has disappeared. What? He was in the train, and now he isn't. Don't panic, Oscar. He can't have gotten far. I'll go and round him up. He is not in the best of health, Kate Walker. And it is so cold. I know, I know, but calm yourself down. I'll go and look for him right away. He can't have gone far. if there's anything in the train to help us. Nothing. Oh well, that was useful. Useless, I mean. in the shop. He isn't. Colonel. What is it now, little miss? I'm looking for a friend of mine. You wouldn't have seen him by any chance. Sorry. I have not seen anyone. Mm. Of course not. Colonel, I've repaired your coal machine and I've managed to open the gate. This time I'll turn a blind eye, but you have violated state-registered property, Miss Walker. Maintenance won't like it, that's for sure. But then again, we see them so rarely these days. Anyway, you won't get any trouble from me. That's nice to know. My friend Hans got out of the train without telling me. You mean he disobeyed orders? <laughs> He's not so young anymore, and our driver is a stickler for the rules. 
Passengers should not just get off the train for no reason. We have a long journey to make. Ooh, it's true your driver did seem a bit... Uh, how would you say... uptight? Excuse me, Colonel, but I have to go out for a while. Do what you have to do, Miss Walker. Indeed. Friends don't disobey orders. Don't have orders. Let's get on. Walker, have you seen my friend? Would you have a second you could spare? Oh, so you're still here then? Yes. Malka, have you seen my friend Hans? He's not in great shape. I've got to find him. The little man? Yes, I've seen him. He's kind. He told me about mammoths and faraway places. So you have seen Hans. Where is he? He went to Circo's place. He said, I'm just going to drop in on an old friend. I'm going to see what I can find further on. Thanks, Malka. As you like, Kate Walker. All right. Of the Circo's place. How's it going? Father, Hans doesn't want to stay in the attic anymore. <laughs> not well, I think. What happened? It, it's not his fault. How's it going? Your brother's a good-for-nothing imbecile, Anna. You hear me? A feeble idiot. Right. Not too well, then. Uh, let's go ask the general manager if there's a doctor. Kate Walker, what does all this mean? I don't know, Oscar. Hans has had a kind of fit, a kind of delirium. His health isn't exactly 100% right now. Why, that's simply awful, Kate Walker. We must do something. Things cannot go on like this. Please, calm down. I'll see what I can do. Okay, Kate Walker, but do hurry. Of course, I always hurry. Turn the fan off. It's cold in here. General store. Just because he's the nearest. You probably have some depressing thing to say like, Oh, your friend must die here now. But maybe not. Colonel, please, can you help me? What can I do for you, Miss Walker? Would you have something to treat a fever? My friend is sick. I'm sorry. I sold my last pills last week. Is there a doctor around here? Or a pharmacy or something? Around these parts? Oh, that would surprise me. They say the monks up there can patch a man up. At least people around here go up there sometimes. Thanks for all your help, Colonel. The pleasure is all mine, Miss Walker. No doctor. What kind of a place is this? There's also no transportation route, so it's not like you can... ...call for a doctor from somewhere else easily. You'd have to bring his skis. Malka? Yes, Kate? Uh, My friend Hans is very sick. He needs taking care of. Oh, otherwise he's going to die, isn't he? Like Mama. I don't know. 
He wants to get to the end of his journey so badly. Sometimes that is not enough, Kate. She's very mature for a seven-year-old. Tell me, do you know anyone who could help heal my friend Hans? Zirkos has special tonics in his bar. No, I need a real doctor. Then you'll have to go to the monastery. Mm -hmm. I suppose there are monks at the monastery. That's right. Monks with big black robes. They're really creepy. There's nothing to be afraid of. As monks, they must be good men. And you tell me they can treat Hans? The Patriarch is a stern old man. He won't treat your friend if you don't follow the monastery rules. How do you know that, Malka? He wouldn't look after Mama straight away. Because of the rules. That's why she's dead. I'm sorry, Malka. Sounds like a lovely person. You there. Um, good evening, sir. Good evening, milady, and welcome to the famous Circus Cabaret, haven of all known pleasures and human arts. How may I be of service to you? I've just arrived here. My name's Walker. Kate Walker. You have a charming little town. Good day to you, Miss Walker. How's our friend Hans Vorlberg coming along? Uh, not great news. Ah... Well, if I can be of service, whatever you require, don't hesitate to shout. A doctor. Mr. Sirkos, you wouldn't know someone who could treat Hans Varlberg, would you? Oh, not many pill pushers around here. Guess there's always the monks. The monks, you say? People around here say the patriarch of the monastery has healing powers. They also say he's a dingling, a bit of a fanatic, if you know what I mean. Well, whatever. I have no choice. Not really. Also, you take care of Malka, don't you? Tell me, Mr. Sirkos. It was you who took in that little girl Malka into your care, wasn't it? I just couldn't bear to leave a little girl like that. What happened to her mother? Oh, a gypsy woman fleeing God knows what monkey business. <laughs> she got here half dead and crazed with fever. The monks helped her, isn't that right? Uh, you could say that. When they stopped being high and mighty, they took her up to their monastery for treatment. But it was far too late for the poor girl. Them old crows make up their own rules. They'd leave a man to rot rather than get their habits dirty. I don't like them one bit, Miss Walker. What rules are you talking about? It's a phony old custom. To decide whether a dying man is actually dying at all, the patriarch of the monastery looks at the patient's face before deciding yay or nay. But how? I don't understand. They kind of make this print of the face on a piece of cloth, you know, like the shroud of Jesus in the Bible. <laughs> right. I must confess I don't really understand this shroud story. You'll see... Just outside the village, the monks have put this kind of iron box. A box containing a pile of linen sheets. When you put one of these sheets over the face of the sick man, it has the curious property of soaking up all his sweat and juices. Yeah. So effective it is that all the features of his face can be seen on the cloth. And so the old patriarch looks to this print to form his diagnosis? At least what he can judge is whether that face on the shroud is sick enough to get dragged up those rocks to the monastery and be treated by him. I suppose anybody can take a cloth from the crate if he needs it? You suppose wrong, Miss Walker. One person has charge of the distribution of the said shrouds, and that's Malka. She sure is proud of her position. The Patriarch himself gave her the responsibility, and that kid ain't giving it up for no man, believe me. Good for her. Do the monks have a telephone? <laughs> uh, they don't even have electricity. You'll have to go up there in person, Miss Walker. Then try to convince them to take care of your friend. All right. Um... How do you get up to the monastery? 
When you go out of here, turn right. You can't miss it. Thanks a lot. Mr. Sirkos, I'm worried about Hans's health. Dang, it's all my fault. Never should have asked him to do me that favor. What do you mean, favor? No major work or anything, just to get my wind-up Broncos back in again. Oh, don't blame yourself. Hans was already ill before he came to see you. You've got nothing to do with it. Indeed he doesn't. Mr. Sirkos, could you please introduce me to the Patriarch of the Monastery? Hmm, want my opinion. Best stay right away. Oh, why's that? Have you ever heard a showman and a priest sing a <laughs> duet together? They think my cabaret is a den of debauchery, and that I'm a funky old miscreant luring lambs from the altar. Really, Mr. Sirkos, we're not in the 19th century anymore. They are. But we're not too far here, Miss Walker. Believe me, best I don't put my finger in that pie. I've got to go now. Go quickly, Miss Walker, and good luck. Mighty kind, Mr. Sirkos. <laughs> All right. Uh... Malka. I need a token. Tell me. How is it going? He told me why they couldn't treat her at the monastery. Yes, Kate. Sometimes, people get too sick and there's nothing that can be done. Is your friend too sick? I hope he isn't. I'm going to help you, Kate. Cool. Help me. Can you help me, Malka? Hmm. Only if your friend is a little bit sick. Not too much or you'll be sad. We'll see. Let's give it a try, you know? Like for your mother, with the monks. On the road to the monastery, there's a kind of box with sheets. The monks call them shrouds. I'm going to give you a token so you can get one. It's very important, Kate Walker. Then what do I do with this shroud? Take it and lay it over your friend's face. <sighs> okay, I'll give it a try. Okay. Got the token. Uh... Thank you for your help. Come back and see me. I like you, Kate. Let's go check out that box. Also, I don't know if anyone noticed, but the song that plays in the cabaret, in Circus's place, is actually... Uh, yeah. It's really a bit too cold. Yeah, I don't think she'll proceed much further. I'll be needing some warm clothes. Yeah. She refuses to walk on. Uh, as I was saying before, the song uh, playing in the cabaret is the song that Helena Romanski sings in the factory in the first game. Obviously an instrumental version. Slightly altered. But it's the same song. Right, off we go, putting a shroud over Hans's face. And getting some warmer clothes too. Let's do the shroud thing first. Blanket on your face. Be 
you. So now his face is imprinted on it with his juices. A circus set. Circles. And off to the general store for some clothes. Because we'll be freezing up in the mountains. Colonel, please, can you help me? What can I do for you, Miss Walker? I want to go up to the monastery, but it's so cold outside. Would you have some warm clothes to loan me? Maybe so. I might find what you want up in the attic. I'll get the ladder out. I'll pay you for what I use, of course. Don't you worry, Kachuchka. You're a true ray of sunshine in this dusty old shop. And we don't see sunshine here every day. Ah. You'll find something that'll fit you in the attic, I'm sure. There you go, miss. I can't climb up there anymore. But I can. He's got a wooden leg. That's why he can't. Uh, oh, rat. Let's hope he didn't eat the clothes. Now, where to find some place appropriate to slip into this? How did they get the bicycle up this attic? I think they had to use like ropes to pull it up or something. Back off to our train so we can get changed and then to deliver the shroud to the monastery. At last, a bit of privacy, for once. What do you mean, Kate? Toasty, and not unelegant, even. 